Uh, I'm Claudio, and I'm technically self-employed, um, but I mostly work for one startup in Singapore right now, which is a second-hand luxury fashion called Star Tribute. Um, this is a different, like this project was done for a different client back in uh, Switzerland, actually. So, um, yeah, the topic is uh, on-demand Im image scaling. So there's also Lambda in there. Um, can get a bit deeper into that, maybe. Um, uh, the, the project I was working on, or the, or the project this is part of, was um, a move to the cloud for uh, like an old school PHP based uh, CMS application. And uh, there was a, a image scaling already built into the templating system of that CMS it's called Typo3 CMS. It's, it's kind of big in Europe, but nobody really knows it outside of Europe. Um, it has like image scaling, all the stuff built into the templating language, but it's, uh, it has a couple of problems. Um, this is how um, this is how it looks like inside the templating system. Um, you you have a, basically a view helper, an image view helper. You pass it uh, an image file name that uh, lies on local storage. Uh, you specify width and height of the image, and it will then on when it generates the page, which is usually dynamically. So when a user goes to the uh, like requests a website, browser requests a website, it will. Um, take that image, see if it already has a scaled down version. If not, scale it down, then output the URL. Um, so you can you can either use image file names. B basically, the way you identify the image is the file name, not some. Well, I mean, you could use a database identifier, but you can use the file name. Now, internally, that looks a bit more complicated. Um, Typo Tree keeps um, mainly two tables by itself: one for all the files it has, and then uh, one table that has uh, one entry for every. Um, scaled version of these image files. So normally for each image, when you generate a page for each image you need to output, each image URL you need to generate in your HTML. It's like this very long process that involves um, uh, checking if the file exists, checking if a database record exists. If it doesn't exist, it will just create it. Um, then checking if a scaled version of the image exists, both on the file system and in the database. Um, uh, if not, scale it. Um, during um, during page generation, and uh, if something goes wrong, actually that's that's kind of the the worst uh, case here. It for some reason it just returns the original file if it can't scale it down, and um, and then that tends to get caught up in caches. Now, if you do this process about a hundred times or something to generate one page, that can be quite slow. It can add a couple hundred milliseconds to your page generation time, uh, and as I mentioned, it's not very reliable. Uh, it also puts all the files uh, on, the local, on the local file system, so that's not very cloudy. We want to serve from AWS S3. Um, and as I said, it has a lots, of, lots of database queries, um, one per image, or at least two per image, actually. Uh, sometimes it will write, um, depending on the status of like how fresh uh, uh, or what's in the cache. Now, uh, my replacement uh, for this um, I wanted to use, as I mentioned, I wanted to use S3. Uh, I wanted to have the same functionality that I can uh, on-demand. Like, I, I don't want on upload time. Um, I have to specify when I upload the image, go like, okay, I need thumbnails in this size. That's like a, a very common case for people. They say if, when you upload, say you have a blog, you upload an image, you know what sizes you need. So on upload, you generate all the different sizes and you save them. Uh, it doesn't work for this case. Um, it was like a highly dynamic, uh, project with lots of different templates and everything. You never know what sizes you need your images in. And uh, I wanted it to be faster, obviously, than the current solution, and uh, robust, uh, mainly. Now, um, this is what I did using, um, um, first, like, concept-wise. Um, I put all the information uh, for the image uh, inside its file name. So we have, if we use a file name as a reference, we have all the information we need in there, um, the size, um, um, a namespace, ta that's basically a table name to make it unique. Say we have uh, multiple tables in our content management system. We have images for ads, for articles, all that stuff. Um, so I want each image um, to be, like each record to have uh, a unique image. So if I delete, a record in the database, I can delete the image that belongs to it without having to be afraid that I will delete, uh, that the image is referenced by some other record. So I want to make the file name unique, um, tied to the record, and it will contain its own, um, the original image width and height. 
So this is generated by the client library that I wrote for this project uh, on upload. When you upload a new file, it will uh, rename it and uh, push it into S3 under that name, the original file name. Then the uh, URL for a scaled version of the image will be derived from that file name. So you can, if you have the original file name and you want to know the URL of that image uh, with different dimensions, you can derive it completely just from the file name itself. Uh, that is also functionality that's inside the client library. So now we have an original file that's saved on S3, uh, image file in like ridiculously high resolution. Uh, we generate a scaled down uh, file name for it, but we don't really have that file yet on S3. Um, and that's where Lambda comes in. So S3, when you make it, it's static hosting, right? So you can't really make it react dynamically to, to your requests. But what you can do is you can make it redirect you whenever you get a 404. When you want to, when you want to download a file that doesn't exist yet, you can make it redirect to AWS API Gateway, and uh, that then will invoke a Lambda function. So based on that, and again, so, so I go back to step two. From the time when I have that, uh, the original file name in my CMS system or whatever, and I want a scaled version of it. I don't have to talk to S3, so there's no like high latency operations involved. I have the file name. I can generate immediately a, a scaled version file name for it. Um, if it doesn't exist, um, it will. Uh, I will get forwarded to API Gateway using a routing rule um, for S3. That's inside the S3 configuration, and then you will call it a lambda scaling task. Now the lambda scaling task gets the path of the scaled file name and can from that derive uh, or, or get back to the original file name. So the lambda task will download the original file from S3, scale it down, put it back on S3 in the scaled version, and then redirect the client back to S3. So in that case, you get like two redirects if the file doesn't exist. But once the file is there, the fut future request will be served directly from S3. So it's basically like as using S3 as a cache, you can control a bit more than CloudFront. The objects stay there indefinitely until you delete them. And uh, uh, yeah, and if they are not there, they will be generated. Um, after that, we add a little bit of cleanup. If you, if you delete an original picture, there's another Lambda task that can be triggered from when you call a, uh, I think it's delete object on S3. You trigger a Lambda task that checks which, object, which file is being deleted, gets all the scaled versions from that, and deletes those as well. So you don't get um, a lot of stuff flying around. Right, um, one problem with this is that if you can derive a scaled file name from the original file name or from any other scaled file name actually, uh, somebody could just um, write a shell script um, with a loop and curl a couple of different image scale configuration for the same image. And uh, it will just fill your S3 with different scaled versions of your image. And uh, it uses a lot of Lambda time. So to avoid that, I signed all the URLs, the generation URLs with the with HMAC um, hash, basically, which is um, a, a shared key way of um, signing messages. So in that case, only the, the server that has the same shared key can actually generate URLs for scaled images, looks like this uh, in the end. It's a very ugly URL in the end, but um, at least this way you can't really create, without, without the key you can't really create uh, random, uh, random uh, scaling configurations for an image. So this is, this is the complete uh, path for a scaled image. It's, uh, it has the, a content hash, reference to the table, uh, the size of the original, the size of the scaled version, and the uh, signature to make sure it's actually it's actually okay to generate the scaled image. So, could, could yeah. like that, sorry. so the original was two, two 240 by 160, and the scaled one is larger. Yes, in that case, it does that too. Uh, I picked I picked a shitty example. Okay, <laughs> pick the random one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, I took a very short demo video. Um, in that case, I took 16 JPEG uh, images, um, around one and a half megabyte in size each, uh, and I scaled them down to 1,000 by 1,000 pixels. 
Um, at the moment where the video starts, the, um, the, the scaled versions do not exist in S3. The originals are uploaded to S3. I put all the URLs in an HTML file, and the video starts when the HTML file is being loaded in the browser. So you get like an idea of the execution performance. Um, in, in that case, I think the, uh, the Lambda function has already been warmed up because it's quite quick. Um, I think I ran uh, the same function a bit earlier. Um, let's see if it plays. Oh uh, no. Yeah, cool. So it starts loading as all images loaded. Um the total actually the total time was uh, about three and a half seconds for sixteen images. Um when they are not uh, in, in S3 yet, when they are not cached, this is the waterfall. The middle one uh, as you can see there's um, per image about three requests. Um uh, the, the original one to S3 redirected to API Gateway, which invokes Lambda, and then back redirected to S3. Uh, obviously, the, the middle one, the Lambda task rescaling takes the longest. So this is the case when the scaled versions don't exist. When they already exist, basically in this case, they actually serve from a CloudFront, because I have a CloudFront in front of it, but uh, um, S3 would be similarly quick, so we have about half a second for 16 images, which is mainly because of the <coughs> of the slow internet connection I tested this with. Just one question on the other side. Yeah? When you call it the gateway, you're actually blocking the call and then the same time uh two locations of things? Yeah, exactly. Okay. So it's it's not uh completely asynchronous. It's parallel though, so that's that's a great thing. I mean I, I could have picked thirty pictures. Actually I don't know how many requests Chrome nowadays does in parallel or browsers. Maybe Sam knows. It's to be you can do Two to the 31st. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, but, but what's, what's so common for browsers? Hmm? On HP1, ah. I think it's eight. Okay. Well, this, uh, for some reason, it, it does all 16 parallel, I think. So it's, uh, it surprised me. I, I thought it was like a lower limit. Anyway, basically, you can, as, as many HTTP connections as you can open until you hit the uh, Lambda limit, I think, to give you a default execution limit of what, 100 or something parallel? I don't know. But it, it, it scales. It, you don't have a per image um, waiting time. So I could have done the same demo with 50 pictures and it would have been the same. Um, right. Uh, I put the code up on GitHub. Uh, the first one is the, the server component. I used um, Terraform for the whole infrastructure, so the whole configuration of API Gateway, S3, Lambda, CloudFront, and all the permissions and everything is inside the Terraform module, which you can use very easily. Um, and then there's sort of as a reference implementation, a PHP client library, which you can use to um, um, generate the image file names and push the images to S3, um, or take the image file names and, uh, and generate like a scaled image version from it. Uh, any questions? Was that sort of clear? Yeah. OK. Well, just my question is, uh, in the Lambda function, what is actually doing the scaling? Does image magic like convert? Or uh, in this case, I've, I used a, th um, a library called Sharp. It's a, a, the Lambda function is in JavaScript. I've used Sharp, which is a bit faster than image magic, I think. It's quite nice, but uh, it has the same, you have to get like a binary. Um, all, all the node modules that, are, that have uh, binary components, you need to compile it on an Amazon Linux, so it was a pain in the ass to get that. I think there's some s tools to automate that. Lambda doesn't install uh, or build dependencies, so yeah, I had to, I had to get like a, 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 an Amazon Linux compiled binary version of it. Sharp. I guess that has a lot of libraries and stuff. Any other questions, guys? Oh, one of that. I don't find this on the FDF as well. No, because uh, there's not really an NPM module that you can use. You can find the PHP part on Composer packages. Um, the, uh, the, the server side part is a Terraform module. If you go to the GitHub, you can see how you can include it in, your, in a Terraform project. But it's not something you can install with NPM. Cool. Uh, what about Cloudinary? I don't know. It's like what a about it? Image CDN thing with all this kind of scaling in the URL options. Ah, yeah, I know. Um, I haven't really looked at it because this project has a lot of images. I think all the um, 
the CDN services I've seen so far, the pricing was not really okay, so compatible with it. Yeah. I mean, here you have, you, you pay S3. Right. Is, and is there a native Amazon scaling thing? I, I'm not yeah. aware of anything, actually. Yeah. Cool. Uh, awesome. Thank you, Claudio. Thanks. Um, hey, guys. Yeah. Thanks very much. Should we just take a five-minute break to go for a piss and uh, <laughs> uh, stretch